going on folks rick here i'm back with another video i'm here to do my fourth edition of my podcast uh my weekly podcast and we're here to talk about what's going on in tech this week so one of the first uh items i wanted to talk about which is a hot topic for me is the lg v20 um so the reason why i'm excited about the v20 was because uh, i don't know i'm going to get into the note 7 in a few minutes but uh, i was disappointed with the note 7 and i expected a lot and i really wanted to review the note 7 but with the price point that they're trying to charge for a phone that's basically an s7 edge with a um with a usb type c port and a s pen it's just it, it really disappointed me so um i turned my sights on to lg so LG is the next manufacturer that, that is out there uh, that is coming up with a, a phone coming September 6th. So next, let, let me rephrase that, next major flagship uh, manufacturer that's coming out with a smartphone uh, on September 6th. So here's a leaked render. So by no means is this the actual uh, cell phone, but this is just an artist's rendering um, something that Android Authority and OnLeaks had put together uh, as their interpretation of what the LG V20 will look like. So, my personal opinion, I think that uh, I've been hearing some rumors that the LG V20 will be similar to the LG G5. Now, if this is the case, uh, you know, leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me. But if this is the case, I think that the, uh, the if the LG V20 is similar uh, looking or similar module design as the LG G5, then I'm sure it's going to be a fail. Why would you take a phone that is known to be doing really bad in the marketplace right now? So LG and their G5, they're actually selling it at a discounted price uh, through T-Mobile. They're actually selling it for... $499, I'm pretty sure you could get it even cheaper if you go through eBay or one of those other third-party um, selling sites, uh, even for $400. So why would you use a similar design to a phone that just wasn't working out for you? It doesn't make a lot of sense, and I'm hoping this artist render is not what the final version is going to look like. Uh, I was looking at a few other uh, leaked images of the G5. Uh, I'm sorry, of the V20, and uh, one of the other renders looked a lot better, so I'm hoping this is not the final edition uh, of the the V20. And I'm not sure if they're trying to be very Nexus P-esque with that huge uh, dual camera set up in the back. I just don't like the way that looks. Uh, it could be, If it could be implemented with the two camera cells, one on top of each other with just a, a smaller... Uh, camera camera lens cover that would be a lot better but um, we are hearing that the LG uh, V20 is going to be coming with a 32-bit hi-fi quad DAC system which is the first smartphone in the world to be equipped with a 32-bit hi-fi quad DAC system and uh, for you guys that might not know what, what I'm talking about all auto audio quality is expected to be amazing on this phone through the headphone jack with that 32-bit uh, quad DAC setup. So I'm curious to see what their speakerphone is gonna sound like, because for me, I enjoy front-firing speakers and I, allow, I enjoy loud speakerphones, uh, whether it's front-firing or bottom-firing. Um, so I'm really curious to see what they're gonna have to offer, and uh, that might be the next flagship phone that I wind up picking up. I know I mentioned in my last video that I was going to pick up the Note 7, but, you know, with everything that came out about it, I just, I, I don't see myself actually purchasing that phone. So here's some more shots of the actual V10. And um, from my experience, I had the V10 for a while. I did actually return it because uh, speaker, loudspeaker quality on that was really poor, uh, even though it did have a DAC on that, on that phone as well. So I'm hoping... They don't uh, repeat the same issues that they had um, earlier in the year. Uh, I think if they're going to do a modular design, something similar to the Moto Z, 
just not as bare bones as the Moto Z, and I think they might actually have a winner. Uh, something that's telling me that they might go with the modular design is because their uh, tagline was, um, I think it was play something, something to do with the hashtag, with the, with the phrase play, play with me or something like that. Uh, so I think that has to do with the friends. But uh, the friends that LG provided with the uh, G5, there were like two or three or four different friends out there. And they really didn't do anything else to create more friends. I guess since sales were so bad, I just think the LG G5 just looks like an ugly phone. They could have did a lot more in, in the sense of design, uh, poor build quality. And, and that's partly why I think that really uh, failed. And then with uh, Motorola coming out and doing modular in a lot better way, in a better fashion with the, you know, you don't have to pull anything out. You just snap it on the back. It hooks up with magnets and you're good to go. Um, all right, let's move on to the next topic, which is something I've been meaning to get off my chest. Let's go to Sam Mobile right here. So Samsung Galaxy Note 7. I, I don't know. Hold on. So Verizon started shipping the Note 7, I believe. Uh, I saw an article that T-Mobile started shipping the Note 7 early as well. So let me get to that one article I was looking at. There was an article here that uh, Samsung was expected to make, you know, somewhere in the ballpark of like $25 billion, this would be this year altogether from their Galaxy series. Uh, and there's just something that I wanted to mention in regards to... Um, the Note 7. So now, for me, I don't know if I'm insane or the whole world just went crazy, but I think the Note series and the, the Note lineup and the Galaxy Note 7 is just trash. It's just garbage. Granted, you have high-end spec phones, but how many years in a row will the Samsung fanboys, and I'm one of them, I'm actually recording on the uh, S7 Edge right now, so... Don't get me wrong, I love Samsung, I love their UI, I love their, their, their phone features and everything of that nature. I said, but how long from the Galaxy S6 till now are they going to continue with the same exact design? So a lot of people are going are gonna, to gonna say to me and they're going to hate on me and say, well, you know, it looks good. So if it looks good, of course, the phone looks good, but the S6 looked good. It was innovative with the S6. Now you have... The S6, then you have the S7 and the S7 Edge that looks exactly the same. And then now you're going to do the Note 7 to look exactly the same as the S6 and the S6. I'm sorry, as the S6, the S7, and the S7 Edge now. So you're going to make the Note variant look exactly the same. There's really nothing there innovative to really distinguish each phone from each other. They practically look the same. You have some tiny, minute little features and little differences like um, the actual band over, I don't know if you can see it right here, the band around the phone is, is equal on each side instead of uh, the metal band being uh, sloped more towards the um, back of the device like the way it is on the S7 lineup. But let me tell you something, I just think the world is going crazy that people are willing to pay $850 for a 64 gig variant when you could pay, all right, I paid 700 and change for the S7 Edge, which I thought was a lot of money. Uh, and for a 32 gig S7 Edge, when I could just buy an SD card for 20 bucks or get them on sale at a certain point for a cheap amount of money. I'm just not understanding why that um, we're gonna we're gonna pay eight hundred fifty dollars for a sixty four gig variant of the Galaxy S seven. So guys, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, sorry guys, I had a little bit of a technical issue there. So uh, yeah, again, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below in regards to the Galaxy Note seven. Am I the only crazy one here that thinks that this phone is a complete rip off? It's definitely not worth $850. Uh, if Samsung was smart, they would price it in the $600 to $650 range 
that that was their bread and butter that was an amazing price point especially now knowing that other manufacturers are putting similar similarly spec phones at four hundred dollars and then you're gonna go ahead and charge eight hundred and fifty dollars for a note 7 that is identical to the s7 edge identical spec wise with the addition of USB type C an iris scanner and some S Pen features. I just don't think that's enough. I hope it's a major fail for them, but I know the Samsung sheeps out there will go in hard and they'll just purchase anything with the Samsung logo on it. So I know they'll do, they'll do well for it, but from my perspective, I think it's a major fail and it's one of the main reasons why I'm gonna look at other manufacturers such as LG, such as uh, ZTE, such as Huawei, uh, and even HTC to see what they have down the pipe. So again, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below in regards to that. And with that being said, let's move on to the next topic since we already mentioned HTC. So guys, I'm going to rotate you guys a little bit just so you can see the pictures. Sorry about that, guys. For some reason, Pocket Now doesn't show the pictures when I'm in landscape mode. Okay. Boom, HTC. So now this is the latest variant of um, the Sailfish, uh, which is HTC's variant of the next Nexus device. And let's click on this real quick. I think HTC made a huge mistake. One of the main factors and main reasons why HTC went over uh, was such a hit in its heyday was the front firing speakers. No other major, major manufacturer had front firing speakers and that boom sound quality that they, that they had on their original devices. So again, you're looking at this here. There's only one speaker right here up on the top. Uh, and I think they're gonna go to a similar design as the HTC 10 with a speaker on the bottom, which is not the uh, bottom chin, which is actually on the bottom of the actual device and um, a speaker up top uh, where the earpiece would be. I think this is a major fail for HTC. And again, guys, let me know what you think in regards to HTC. Are, there, are they doing a bad thing by not including front firing speakers anymore? And it's odd to me because this Nexus device looks like it has a fingerprint scanner on the back. So from my perspective, that would be the only reason why you wouldn't put front firing speakers because the HTC 10 had the fingerprint scanner on the front of the device. So, uh, you know, you kind of give them a little bit more leeway because they don't have, um, uh, because they have the fing fingerprint scanner on the bottom and there really wasn't space for that second speaker. But with this device, you see it clearly on the back of the device. So I really don't know why they're not going with front firing speakers. And I, I don't know if this is just to sell more HTC 10s to show people that the design of the woofer and the tweeter uh, being separate, one on the bottom, one on the top, is, uh, is, is the route they wanna go. But I think it's a major fail for them. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below in that regard. Uh, but next up in regards to HTC, we have some leaked images right here. Let me pull this up. Boom. We have some leaked images. Let me see if I could put this in landscape mode. Okay, yes, I can. All right, so we have some leaked images of the HTC Desire 10 Pro. Now, not for nothing, I'm actually digging this design. And again, see, like I said, you sell the Nexus device without having the front firing speakers. Now look at this HTC Desire 10 Pro. It has um, a significantly large camera hump on the back, but I like the design. It has a fingerprint scanner on the back, just like the Nexus, but look at the bottom. No front firing speakers. You just have that one top speaker and that's it. So I think this is the direction HTC is going in and it's been proven that the HTC, HTC 10 speaker is not louder 
than the older variants like on the M9 or the M8 or other devices that have front firing speakers. It just isn't as loud. Uh, take the Axon, Axon 7 for instance, has super loud, 10 times louder speakers than, and than the HTC devices. Um, and you know, they're doing it at a $400 price point. Uh, but other than that, I like this phone. I like the design of it. Let me guys, let me know what you guys think of the design of this device. Uh, spec wise, um, doesn't really go into it. The white variant is really nice too. I like that. Uh, but we don't know too much in regards to specs as a, we don't know too much in regards to spec, right? Or specs right now, Blech. but, um, let me know what you guys think of the design of this device overall. So moving forward, good old Asus. Now I've been bringing up Asus, the Zenfone 3 Deluxe in uh, all of my podcasts. And, uh, and you know what, not for nothing, Asus is really frustrating me with uh, releasing this device. This device was announced in May. This device was announced in May and it still hasn't been released. So. Uh, H, not HTC, Asus actually has a uh, live stream event which is going to take place on August 17th in India and we're hoping that they will be unveiling uh, the HTC, why well, I keep saying HTC, the Zenfone 3 Deluxe and an actual launch date uh, for, for the US uh, during this whole um, launch event that they're having. This is the next mid-range flagship phone that I want to pick up. Now, I was going to purchase the Axon 7, but the reason why I decided not to was my initial thoughts of the Axon 7 was it was everything I wanted in a phone with the exception of the camera. So I think it kind of took some cues from HTC. Now, cameras are not just about megapixels. So it has a 20 megapixel camera. Um, in regards to the Axon 7, but the image, stabil image stabilization is really weak, it's really choppy. Uh, I saw some uh, sample video clips, and um, when it was using the image stabil stabilization compared to the S7 stabilization, it was night and day. It was very choppy, wiggly, uh, and it's just a really doing a really bad job. In addition to that, really bad low light photos. So. Um, that's one of the main reasons I decided to hold back on purchasing the Axon 7. But other than that, it had a lot of things that I wanted in a phone. It had a uh, quick charge 3.0, the front firing Dolby speakers that really, really wanted to make me uh, go in and purchase that because, you know, I definitely like to listen to music through the loudspeakers of the phone. Um, it had a Snapdragon 820. It had everything that you wanted. And when you heard on paper the 20 megapixel camera, you really said to yourself, hey, this is something I could picture myself picking up for 400 bucks. It was an amazing price. If they just would have tweaked that camera and got that camera a little bit better and got that image stabilization a little bit better, uh, it might have made my uh, decision a lot more easier and I would have just followed through with it. But at this point, um, I think I'm going to hold off. Uh, and I'm waiting to see what's going to happen with the Zenfone 3 Deluxe um, during this launch event on the 17th. I'm hoping a U.S. Um, announcement will be made or a launch date in the U.S. will be made during this event as well. So, uh, so yeah, um, the, from what I'm hearing, there's going to be two variants of this. There's going to be uh, both variants are going to have six gigabytes of RAM. There'll be a cheaper variant with the Snapdragon 820 and a 64, 64 gigabyte hard, not hard drive, 64 gigabyte uh, memory, storage, whatever you want, 64 gigabyte storage, that's what I was trying to say. Um, cheaper, and then you'll have the six gigabyte Snapdragon 821 with, uh, I believe, 256 gigabytes of storage, which is just crazy. Uh, that would be amazing, but I think realistically, uh, since it does have expandable memory, uh, the Snapdragon 820 and the 821, the 21 has been proven to be about 10% more efficient than the 820. So if the price difference is 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 uh, greater than 50 bucks, 
uh, or even a hundred bucks, then I might as well just go with the Snapdragon 820, which is a beast of a processor uh, and uh, a 64 gigabyte memory. Because 64 gigs with a 64 gig expandable memory is just more than enough and that most people would ever need. And especially someone like myself that downloads uh, quite a few apps and, and I do a lot of videos for YouTube uh, off of my phone. So uh, that's more than enough for me. And I'm really excited about this phone. Um, I think Asus is really hitting it out the park. Next up, let's see what's going on. I'm a T-Mobile subscriber, so let's see what's going on with T-Mobile, with T-Mo News. Big shout out to T-Mo News. Okay, again, this is some upcoming um, HTC photos of the Nexus uh, Sailfish. Also, I was seeing uh, an article here on T-Mobile News. Let's see if we could find it. Boom. The HTC 10 once again disappears from the T-Mobile website. So, guys, let me know about your thoughts about that. Uh, apparently, the HTC, HTC 10 is doing so poorly in sales that T-Mobile has completely taken it off its website. They did put out um, a communication to not basically ascend, uh, offend the company and say that, you know, they're running low on stock, so that's why they pulled it. But realistically, they pulled it because sales are so bad on this phone that no one is buying it. So it's just taken up shelf space, so they decided to pull it out completely and take that off their website. Um, boom, T-Mobile starts charging for pre-orders. What else we have here? Boom, boom, boom. Don't forget to do your T-Mobile Tuesdays, which is coming up in another day or two. Um, you know, I really, what, what would have been a really good choice for me for a mid-range phone, I was just really hoping that the Alcatel Idol 4S would have had a Snapdragon 820 um, and four gigabytes of RAM. And that would have made my decision very easy. I probably would have pre-ordered that for the 340 with the JBL headphones. Uh, and I just think, again, just like Asus is doing now, um, the Alcatel Idol 4S was announced months and months and months before the launch. And it took almost, uh, like six months for it to actually be available. And in that time frame, technology surpassed that phone and now it's on the lower end of the spectrum with uh i think it was a snapdragon 615 processor with three gigabytes of ram which is capable but when you're seeing mid-range flagship phones selling for the same price like uh the zte axon 7 snapdragon 820 front firing speakers uh 2k display um 20 megapixel camera you know what i mean uh, all metal design so you're seeing their competitors price their phone with a lot more high-end specs at the same price there's really no way I could really purchase the Alcatel Idol 4S uh, when there's phones out there like the ZTE Axon 7 now even though the camera on the ZTE Axon 7 may not be the greatest in low-light photos it's still a very capable phone and I think right now to date it is the best mid-range phone out available for the price spec wise for the price it's the best mid-range phone out there i know there's going to be a few oneplus fanboys out there that want to dispute that i just don't like oneplus uh i think they did a major fail by not adding expandable memory and only putting one variant out so you have 64 gigabytes of memory and that's it so once you top off your 64 gigabytes you're screwed, you know what I mean? And I, and I could go through 64 gigabytes of internal storage very quickly. Uh, and then in addition to that, um, you know, having the memory card would, would be very useful. So all right guys, uh, that was my video for today. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, obviously leave them down below. A thumbs up would be really great. Uh, I just hit my 500 subscriber mark. Uh, I, I did like a little bit of a thank you video. So I really appreciate all you guys that have been watching my videos on a consistent basis and giving me that thumbs up. It really goes a long way and uh, definitely appreciate it. All right, guys, that's my video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully 
The next video that I'm going to be doing is the Asus Zenfone 3 Deluxe and then the LG V20. Uh, let's hope the V20, I'm really optimistic having my fingers crossed that this phone is going to be a beast of a phone. Spec wise, um, front firing speakers, Snapdragon 820. It, it, it is, uh, they did say it's going to be the first phone to launch with Nougat even before the Nexus device drops. So that would be cool. So I'm just, I have high hopes for this. All metal design, a similar uh, modular design to um, the Moto Z phones. And uh, I, I really hope this phone is gonna is gonna be a beast because right now LG is in the toilet and they need something to take them out. And I hope they don't follow like HTC building crappy phone after crappy phone after crappy phone uh, and just bite the bullet and build something that people really want to see. Even if they build, I saw um, a concept render of the LG V20. Uh, and let me let me see if I could pull that up for you guys real quick. I saw a render of the V20 and I really liked the way it looked. It was like an all glass design. Let me see. It had a glass front and back and it was like a curved design and it just looked beautiful. It, it really looked nice. Let me see if we have any images here. So let me LG V20. Boom. All right, let's look at images. So basically, if you're on LG site, they really don't have much. These are, all right, here it is. This image right here. This phone to me looks really hot. It looks really amazing. Fuck the whole modularity thing. I really don't need it. I just need a spec out phone that's going to be a beast. And I'm really digging this, this artist concept render, whatever you want to call it. I know the phone is probably not going to look like this. I wouldn't be so lucky. Lucky. But it's kind of got that curved glass on the front and the back, and it looks very high end. Front firing speakers, amazing. The those dual cameras on the front, just like the V10 had. Uh, fingerprint scanner on the back. This phone looks sexy. I would buy this phone in a heartbeat. So I don't know if LG is listening, but if if you don't have the final touches on the V20, definitely this is something that looks really nice. I definitely like the look of this phone. Um, let me see the other concepts that are out there. Um, see, this is the LG G5 right there on the right hand side. It's caca, it's just straight trash. Again, and this is one of the uh, leaked photos or the artist render photos that has been given out by OnLeaks and Android Authority as to what they think the phone will look, that, uh, look like based on the information that has been leaked out by LG or other sources of the phone still gonna have modularity uh, similar to the G5. So I'm really hoping they take it in another direction because the G5 was a flop and why else would you, why would you mirror a phone after a phone that was bad just because you're pushing that phone as your flagship. Um, there was one other render out there that looked really good. I'm trying to see if I could find it. That one looks cool. That looks hot. No, actually, it doesn't look that hot. Where is it? Where is it? So here's another render of that same photo that I told you I liked the way it looked. And it does have the same modularity as the G5. Actually, you know what? That might not be as bad. But the G5, like on the bottom portion right there, uh, it, it didn't fit flush with the phone. So you had some gapping on the bottom and it just it just looked really ugly. So I hope it doesn't have this type of modularity, but I think it might. Um, I'm just really trying to be optimistic and see what they have coming out. All right, guys, I guess I can't find that last photo. But all right, any comments, questions, leave them down below. And again, guys, thanks for watching my videos, and please give this a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Thanks a lot. See you later.